Welcome to a vehicle that looks, well, a little bit familiar, but we'll come back to that. This is the Ineos Grenadier. And I feel we should probably introduce it because it is, well, it's a whole new car company, to be honest. Let's start with the Ineos part of the name. Now, Ineos, you might have seen on various things, so it's on the side of Mercedes Formula One cars at the moment, it's on the America's Cup team boats. There's also an entire cycling team that's, uh, well, formerly known as Sky. But Ineos is a company, it's a chemicals company, and it has a 60 billion turnover annually, which is pretty enormous. And as a result, the founder, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, is possibly the wealthiest man in the UK and he's the brains behind all this and sort of certainly the the outset because he was in the pub one day with his friends and he was bemoaning the demise of the Land Rover Defender the old one and saw a gap in the market so he thought why not let's build something to replace that and this is it the Ineos Grenadier and we'll deal with the Grenadier bit of the name now because the Grenadiers were always well they were the the tallest and strongest soldiers in an army. They, they threw grenades, fairly obviously. And this is a tall, big and strong vehicle. It is unashamedly utilitarian. Built on purpose is the slogan that they've used. You look around it and some of you might be seeing Land Rover in it, some of you might be seeing G-Wagon in it, some of you might be thinking Santana Land Rover if you're really into your Land Rovers. It's a body on frame, design, no air suspension, it's got live front and rear axles, it's got three locking differentials, it's got high and low ratios, obviously proper tyres here, steel wheels there. Under the bonnet, well we've got, powered by BMW here, you've got choice of engines, so it's the B57 or the B58 engine, B57 being a straight six diesel, B58 being straight six petrol, turbocharged. And that's interesting as well with this car because they've set up this company and they're not trying to do it all themselves. They've partnered with various people. So BMW for one, ZF is doing the gearbox, Carraro is doing the axle. So people that know about this stuff, they're not trying to sort of design it all themselves. Magna is doing the engineering underneath the vehicle. They're a company that has done the G-Wagon. They know what they're talking about. And what you've ended up with is this. Final pricing hasn't been revealed yet, but expected to start at around £45,000. Eventually they hope to sell between £25,000 and £30,000 a year, and to tell us a little more about who they think these people will be, we thought we'd speak to the head of design. Cue the moody lighting. Toby, thank you so much for talking me round some of this. Oh, it's a pleasure. From, from you, is, is who is the customer for this? It's really designed to, to appeal to lots of different people, I guess, from you know, to professional, to the farmer, to the lifestyle kind of buyer, to military, to general sort of professional use, I guess. And to that extent, there's obviously, it's a, a nicely utilitarian vehicle. Just, just talk us through some of the things that you've done to make this as usable as possible to the, the widest variety yeah. of people. I mean, I think we didn't really have any sort of preconceived ideas when we started and of, of what it was going to look like in the end, but we had a an idea of what it needed to do, what its sort of performance needed to be, which was based on lots of conversations with enthusiasts and with professional uh, users. And it was really this, this idea of having a very basic, no-nonsense, straightforward, as straightforward as we could possibly make it in, in this sort of day and age. You know, the, the sort of body shape, I guess, was very, really derived from having sort of beam axles with an engine on top of that, which then you know, has a, a knock-on effect of we didn't need a bonnet that covered the entire front of the car because the, the engine's in the middle there. So, and these sort of side wings are always really useful that you know, for leaning on to chat and interviews <laughs> or to, um, you know, to cup of tea, laptop, whatever. You know, it becomes a, you know, as a as a work vehicle mode. This becomes a sort of a work top, and which was something that we sort of picked up on and we we listened to, and, and it's actually you know, by sort of default gives it the sort of character of the car. So. All the sort of mechanical side of things with the, you know, the entry and exit angles, wheels as essentially as far forward as we could and far back as we could, you know, obviously all help with the, with the off-roading capabilities. It was sort of 
function first on, on pretty much every element, you know, down to headlights and you know, windscreen wipers. It was all, you know, what's the best way of doing this? What's the simplest way of doing this? And then we kind of took that away and then tried to you know, put them all together in a coherent and elegant way, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> because this, you know, the whole idea is that it's going to have to work and survive and be repaired in fairly yeah. remote sort of locations, yeah. potentially. And I think, I think there's sort of days of being able to open the bonnet and throw a few screwdrivers and a hammer in there and, and it, amend it have, have probably gone just with the terms of how complicated engines are and you know, the, all the, the clever things they have to do to, to beat emissions and, and, and be safe. But what we have tried to do is make all the systems around that as simple and as basic as we, as we can. So you can repair it to a much greater extent than you can with a lot of other, other vehicles. And always have that in mind, you know, even down to the sort of interior, the, the, the dashboard and everything. Which, uh, you know, the idea is that you can take that apart, you can sort of repair that if you need to. There's pre-wired switches in there, so if you do need to add auxiliary equipment, which is very much a part of this type of vehicle that you, know, you probably would want a winch in some cases, and you know, additional lighting and you know, sort of power takeoff from there, then that's all sort of pre-wired, so you're not sort of having to sort of take everything apart and never quite get it back together again properly. You know, we've tried to preempt as many of these sort of very sort of practical angles as, as we could. I know you said sort of you know, there will be some accessory packages from in-house, but you've you've worked with sort of external suppliers a yeah. lot to say that you know you, we realise there's stuff already out there and yeah, and, and, I, and I think it's a very big part of owning a vehicle like this is that you know people do customise and they you know they have their own own needs and then part of that is that you know there's an enormous number of people that are, are making you know whether it's rebars or winches or you know, additional lighting and it made sense to to work with them rather than sort of give them a, a very sort of rigid platform that so it has to work with this. You know, so with the rebars, for example, we, we talk to people who, who make really good rebars and say, what would you need for, for, your, for an ideal rebar to work on here? And we work with them you know, in collaboration with them on a, on a design and say, so actually, we need a, a really strong fixing point you know, above the wheel. And so you know, we do our best to sort of include that in our sort of under the skin construction so that, you know, that, that works. You know, there's a load of knowledge that, you know, why would we ignore that? And you know, let's embrace it and, and work with with everybody because it's, you know, it's a big part of what the car does. Yeah. I know you had a few um, interesting suggestions or sort of questions from yeah, so, military outlets. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, we, we talked to um, the sort of special forces guys and um, their questions were quite kind of left field. <laughs> can you turn the brake lights off? You know, can we fit infrared uh, you know, within in the lights in the front here? Yeah. Um, you know, brilliant question and a kind of little insight into into their world I guess and obviously we can't turn brake lights off on you know on a, on a road legal car but you know, that's the sort of uh, sort of level I guess of different sort of requests that, that come in and you know, all sorts of other examples as well but I think they're yeah. the most amusing <laughs> <laughs> and obviously here we've got which I think is the the M1 configuration yeah. so we've got the the five seats but yeah. there's going to be N1 with two rows of seats and then N2 and you can fit yeah. the Euro pallet in the That's back correct. of Yeah, so of that. The, the only difference really is that the rear seats in the, the N1 is that there's a guard that goes across between the, the main sort of seating cabin and the, and the load space and the seats are slightly more upright. But yeah, you can get a Euro pallet in the back. It seems like it's been quite good fun to design yeah, this. It has. I mean, there's been challenges, of course, but Obviously. is it possible to make something that complies with everything everywhere? Uh, without adjusting the design for each country, you know that's a that's a fairly big, big thing to sort of get your head around. But essentially, you know, it is good fun, and you know, I think the end use has always sort of been in mind. And it isn't a big, big luxury SUV. It's not a sports car. It's for a lot of people, this is going to be the the route to some really good times. And you know, it's a recreational vehicle for for a lot of people. You know, I think that sort of hopefully comes through a little bit in in the design as well. It's not all very, very serious. <laughs> Excellent. Terry, thank you very much. No, pleasure. Thank you. Well, that was all very affable, wasn't it? Now, there is one part of the Grenadier that we haven't really looked at yet, the interior. And at first glance, it's, it's pretty cool, actually. Love all the switches up here. There's a distinctly sort of um, aircraft, maritime 
feel about all of this. Basically, so the switches down here are all your sort of HVAC controls, you've got heated seats, uh, climate control, you've got the hazard warning there. And then up here is generally all your off-road stuff. And everything's labeled, which I really quite like. I'm saying it's a big car. Uh, see, it's 2.13 meters wide and it's 2.03 meters tall. The panels up here and down here, in fact, they've all got um, screws so you can take them all out so you can get to the gubbins, the electronics behind them, either to fix them or to add in extra things up here. And you've got all sorts of isolator switches up here, and the whole thing is wired so that you want to add in accessories or you know whatever for camping or whatever sport you're doing or whoever you're trying to save then um, that's all very possible with this overall it's there's not as much room in here as you might expect given that it's a, a big vehicle it's certainly um, it's not cramped and it's not like a, an old defender so you're not sort of you know, right up against the window here but it is sort of quite small this is sort of an, an option you've got all sorts of plugs and everything here and you've got a domestic three pin back there as well and they've, they've put real effort into making sure that this is a power source really works basically so you can charge whether it's tools or as I say or outdoor equipment or whatever it is. I've got a touch screen up here there's going to be a little screen down here just because for legal reasons you have to have uh, your speed and your sort of various warning lights directly in front of you but essentially you've got a really nice clear view out in front. It doesn't come with its own navigation system as such uh, it's got Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for that, but it has got an off-road navigation system, uh, which I think is called Pathfinder. So you can put your waypoints in if you're doing Paridacra or whatever, then you, know, you can plot your waypoints across country, which is quite cool. Just notice this as well as well. So you've got your navigation, but you have also got your nice little compass up there as well. Other things that are worth mentioning is the fact that although this is a touch screen, you can operate everything via buttons down here. The idea that if you get into this and you've got big wet gloves on, then you're not stabbing around at a touchscreen up here. You can operate everything when you're cold and muddy, etc. Talking of that, this car's got some, some carpets in, but it obviously, because it seems to be a big thing, it has uh, sort of no carpets as standard and it's a hose down interior. So you've got the plugs in the bottom. From this level up, it's all splash proof so you know it should be hard wearing because they they want this to be something that does last you know is durable having said that there are some sort of little bits to, of luxury here so this wheel and in fact the handbrake down here covered in saddle leather because toby was saying he, he likes the idea that it will get some pattern over the years and it shouldn't all just be sort of, sort of hard wearing plastics it's really, they want it to be comfortable as well so these seats are from Recaro and they feel very nice indeed a couple of bits of color in here because it's predominantly sort of monochrome isn't it but we've got red and green port and starboard that's um, up here somewhere as well yep, just up there and then this red button here which has got a little picture of a bicycle and says toot and obviously the Ineos Grenadiers are a cycling team very successful cycling team and one of the things that came back from them and something that to be honest I've always thought because I cycle as well when you're cycling along the road, a lot of the time, you don't actually hear traffic come up behind you because if you're cycling along at, say, 20 miles an hour, um, even less than that, then the wind noise just means that it's, it's quite difficult to hear what's behind you. Obviously, if you're a car driver, it's nice to let people know that you're behind sort of, you know, cyclists, but you don't want to do it with a full-on beep on the horn because that will scare the life out of um, whoever's in front. It might be a horse or something like that. So toot, which is a much friendlier horn. So there we go. I like that detail. Other things to mention, this car doesn't have it, but you will be able to get glass panels in the roof up here, which apparently changes the feel quite a lot, I can imagine that. And gear selector, very obviously BMW. They did think about creating their own one. They had all sorts of lovely designs, but the cost of tooling that up, well, it was just prohibitive. It would have been passed on to the end user, so they figured it's just not really worth it. So that's the reason that exists. There we are then. I think it's a pretty cool interior actually. Functional, but that has its own cool. One thing's for sure, INEOS certainly doesn't seem to do things by halves. A billion euros is being invested in bringing the Grandier to market and a complete factory has been purchased. Sadly not in Wales as was initially suggested, but in Hamback in France. 
it was actually previously Daimler's smart fill factory, and in fact Ineos is continuing to build smart cars under contract in order to get up to speed with car manufacturing. So what do you all think? Is it a genuine Defender replacement? Is it more of a G-Wagon alternative? Is it more appealing than a new Defender? Is it too basic? Is it not basic enough? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. One thing's for sure, it should be fun dreaming up somewhere to test one when it's ready, which should be in 2022. Thank you very much indeed for watching, and thank you very much to those of you that have subscribed to the channel, whether recently or years ago. And if you haven't, then please do think about helping us reach that magic million mark.